Okay. I, all right, so, hello. I'm here to teach you about some North Dakota history. North Dakota, which is sprawled across my bosom. <laughs> and, uh, yes, because this is a state, it's a bit of a square. Really? Unlike its people. Its people are fun. They're not squares. So let's talk about Poker Jim, all right? So our scene is set. Mm -hmm. In February 24th, 1973. Set in 1924, 1973. And this dude named uh, Leonard Lund is like, hey, I really have to find a story. I gotta write this story for this paper called Minot Daily News or Daily News Minot, something of, of that sort. Okay. Yeah. He was like, I really gotta write the story. Because his boss is like, <sighs> breathing out his neck, like, hey, you gotta write a story. We gotta print something. And he's like, all right, all right, all right. In the 70s, she's just like, struck in his mustache. Like, that probably means more to him than his children. His mustache is very important in the 70s, right? Yeah. And he was just like, I gotta find something to write about. So, he finds us, finds out about this dude named Poker Jim. We don't know if that's his real name, because it's Poker Jim. That's how he's known. Not his real name, but that's okay. So he writes about this dude from 1894. Now, Poker Jim is an interesting fella. He was uh, probably an outlaw. We don't know for sure, but I like to think he was all like, ah, and then catch me alive, coppers. And then he goes and he joins this, this uh, cattle ranch to uh, ranch some cattle from a dude named, let's see, uh, Pierre Wibuch. Wibuch. I don't know French. I took Spanish in high school. So Pierre, we're just gonna call him Pierre because that's the best thing I can pronounce. And Pierre was like, all right, so I don't know anything about you. We're gonna hire you. We're gonna ranch some cattle. I don't really know anything about ranching cattle. I don't know what that entails. So we're gonna do this. And you're gonna be a part of this little group here. And you're gonna ranch some cattle it's gonna be good. So like, all right, we're gonna ranch some cattle. Except that it's, it's winter. It's winter from the South Dakota. And Mr. Pierre is an, a, a pretty successful uh, cattle rancher. Except I got a question. The, um, smartness of ranching cattle in the winter in North Dakota slash South Dakota because it's real cold. It's real cold. But, you know, they did it because they needed money. And Pierre was like, all right, I'll hire you. Go with this group. Ranch some cattle. Let's see what happens. So, this group of cowboys, because that's what they are, it's 18... 94. They're cowboys and they're trying to ranch some cattle, you know? Woo! And uh, Mr. Poker Jim is like, all right, guys, let's ranch some cattle. And he and the group are like, all right, we're doing this. Except it's really freaking cold. And they're running out of food supplies. They're running. Let's go and I will ride the 65 miles. It takes to find the new supply chain. And that's not exactly how it went. He was delegated, he <laughs> probably drew the short straw. But bottom line is, he went out into that cold winter night and he was like, I gotta get some food for my people, otherwise they're gonna eat each other and me. So he was like, yeah, I'm gonna ride my horse. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get some food for these people so they don't eat each other. So he goes, and his group is all like, yeah, Jim, 
What a swell guy. He went to go get food for us. Except he should have been back by now. Should have been back. We're gonna go search for him because who knows what could happen in nine or 1894 without central heating, without all like cars to drive him, like fucking roads, roads to get to a place to place. Like how, how was he supposed to get to that place to get food supplies to bring back to his group? We don't know. And unfortunately, they never found out because as they were out searching for him, they found him, his corpse. His corpse was frozen to death. You know, his homies, they find his frozen body and they're like, oh God, damn it, he was so close. He was only 10 miles away from our, our camp. He was only 10 miles on his little horse. And his horse was like, tied to a tree and was eating the bark. His horse was fine, by the way. No animals have been harmed in the development of the story. And his, you know, his friends were like, all right, well, we gotta take him back to camp. His corpse. I mean, his friends were like, I mean, I don't wanna be rude or anything, but like, what do we do with this corpse? It's pretty gross. Like, what do we do with it? So, uh, they put his body in the rafters. Rafters of their, uh, camp there. So, like, they were sad that their friend Jim, good old Jim, good old Jimmy, was, a uh, dead from coldness because he was trying to get them food to survive. So they're like, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna have a poker party. So they had a poker party. They're like, yeah, we'll get the fire going, we'll get the whiskey, we'll get the poker, and we're gonna have a good time in memorial of uh, Jim. Poker Jim, as we now call him. And they're just having a good old time. They're sad, they're weeping. They're just like, oh, Jim, such a good guy. He was an outlaw, so he obviously did some bad things, but he was a good dude. He went to go get us food. But uh, Jim, in the rafters there, his soul re-entered his body and enervated his body, and he fell. He fucking was like, Psh. you bitches thought you could move on from me that fast? No. No, you could not. So he completely fucked up that whole poker party. He was like the fucking, I don't know, Games of Thrones. Weird, they never watched it. Like he was the, uh, what's, what's, what are they called? Walking Dead. The White Walkers. White Walkers, he was a White Walker. He was like, ah, I'm back from the dead. I'm frozen, I'm so cold. Except that he was actually dead, but like their fire that they had started, uh, warmed his body, so he fucking fell on their table. And the people were really freaked out and were like, okay, we won't play any more poker. We're just gonna, we're just gonna call it a day. And, uh, that's the story of Poker Jim.